All praises to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rechakodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone, and peace and blessings to the Akim out there doing the work of Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, in truth, faith, and in sincerity. This is Revelation chapter 11, verse 14. The second woe is past, and behold, the third woe coming quickly. All right, so this particular scripture is in reference to World War III. All right, it's speaking about the second woe being passed. The woe is in reference to war. All right, woe, the word in itself deals with death and destruction. All right. And so the second woe passed, what, 1945, <clears throat> from 1939 to 1945. And uh, it says, behold, the third woe coming quickly. All right, we are in the time currently in the time of this third woe coming to pass, all right? We are staring directly down the barrel of World War III, and it is soon to uh, get hot, all right? We've been in the Cold War. Well, America and NATO has been in the Cold War with Russia since the second woe, and that Cold War is getting ready to go hot, all right? All behind the Ukraine situation as well as other factors that are factoring in the the whole geopolitical scene worldwide is a nightmare is is a is is a disaster and one that's about to uh brew into a third woe all right so i'm going to share this real quick Today, I'm announcing that the United States will be sending 31 Abram tanks to Ukraine, the equivalent of one Ukrainian battalion. Secretary Austin has recommended this step because it will enhance the Ukraine's capacity to defend its territory and achieve its strategic objectives. The Abrams tanks are the most capable tanks in the world. They're also extremely complex to operate and maintain. So we're also giving Ukraine the parts and equipment necessary to effectively sustain these tanks on the battlefield. And we'll, begin, we'll begin to train the Ukrainian troops on these issues of sustainment, logistics, and maintenance as soon as possible. The idea, the idea that we're going to send in offensive equipment and have planes and tanks and trains uh, going in with American pilots and American crews, just understand, and, uh, don't kid yourself, no matter what you all say, that's called World War Three. Okay. Four Star Air Force General is now predicting war with China. He writes in a memo that Beijing will likely invade Taiwan while the U.S. is distracted by the upcoming presidential election. He says, quote, I hope I'm wrong. My gut tells me we'll fight in 2025. Let's bring in General Jack Keane now. General Keane, thank you very much for being here today. Uh, that's a that's that's a pretty big warning that he's putting out there, uh, saying that we'll be at war with China in two years, telling uh, the officers that he commands in this memo in which he made this prediction to get ready to prep by firing, quote, a clip at a target and aim for the head. Do you agree with this prediction? Well, we don't know for sure whether this is imminent or not, because it's subjective analysis, to be sure. And listen, we're at peace, relatively speaking, and it's the duty of commanders to prepare their troops for war. And I spoke in very direct, blunt language like this general has in preparing my troops during peacetime for war as well. This is an internal memo. I'm not sure he thought it was going to be publicized, but nonetheless, uh, that, that's the motivation he has in doing it. Certainly, it's signaling an eventuality in a couple of years is what's gotten everybody's attention. We don't know whether it's imminent or not. I suspect it's not imminent, but I don't think that's the critical point. The real issue is here is that we don't have an effective military deterrence in place. And what am I talking about? The Chinese have more ships, more airplanes, and more missiles than the United States has, and at some point, quantity has a quality all of its own. They have a decided advantage. The second thing is we're trying to upgun Taiwan, Sandra, and we've got a $19 billion backlog in the equipment that they have requested and already paid for. The Congress has got to fix this foreign military sales thing. It is absolutely handicapping our 
our ability to do what's right. What we're trying to do here, so audience understand, is prevent a war. That is what the intent is here. To do that, let's get Taiwan up gun like we have finally done after the war started with Ukraine. We can't do that once war starts because they're an island nation. We'll never be able to get supplies into them. Secondly, we've got to fix our own inadequacy in the region. Then when we do this objectively, we can make some predictions ourselves that we got a deterrence again and therefore the likelihood of China taking on the United States and Taiwan, it would be slim, it would be diminished. But that's not the case now. We, I think, are in a critical zone because we have this vulnerability of a lack of a military deterrence. And it sounds like while you agree this is an eventuality that you don't believe it's as imminent as this four-star Air Force general who's pinning that on the distraction that he says will be uh, the United States presidential elections. Real quick final thought on if you believe Congress will follow through on what you are calling on Congress to do. When this general laid out goal for preparing, he included building a fortified, ready, integrated and agile joint force maneuver team ready to fight and win inside the first island chain. Will Congress follow through on the demands you just said? Well, first of all, the executive branch has got to make that decision. They control the Department of Defense. And listen, he has background in the Indo-Pacific region. His current command has nothing to do with the Indo-Pacific other than he would support it with airplanes. But he spent years in the region, so you take his counsel. He has an understanding of what our deficiencies are there, to be sure. And I'm thinking that's what's driving him to his, to his conclusions. But we need the executive branch to step up and really thicken our defenses in that first island chain. We need more ships, we need more airplanes, we need more land forces that control and influence the major navigation routes in the region. And as I said before, we absolutely have to upgun Taiwan. If we've learned anything from Ukraine, we didn't deter Ukraine, uh, we didn't deter the Russians by having the, the proper amount of equipment in Ukraine. As a matter of fact, they saw it as an advantage. And we've done commendable work, obviously, since that time. And it's a major lesson. Yeah. Let's get the stuff into Taiwan now to prevent China from even thinking about taking this kind of action. We hear the urgency from you, General Jack Keen, joining us now. Thank you very much. Yes, so there you have it, man. America is poised and prepped for a fall, all right? And uh, you, you heard him. He said there's a backlog with Taiwan with weapons that they've paid for that they haven't received. And not only Taiwan, but that's the exact same thing that um, Turkey have been in up in arms about that they paid uh, so many billions or at least up to a billion dollars for weapons that they never received from America. So you got Taiwan, you got Turkey, and uh, it, there's no telling who else, but I know those two for sure, as you just heard in this case with uh, Taiwan, that... <coughs> They paid America for weapons and haven't received them. And uh, Turkey has, has publicly uh, condemned the U.S. behind that. And so we see, all right, we, we see that this is wrong all over again. You got America stretched thin and uh, poised to fall. Now, this is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 1. We're going to jump around. It says, the word of the Lord spake against Babylon, all right? Babylon today is America. This is talking about modern day Babylon, all right? Spiritual Babylon, all right? The word of the Lord spake against Babylon and against the land of the Chaldeans by Jeremiah the prophet. Declare ye among the nations and publish and set up a standard. Publish and conceal not. Say Babylon is taken, Baal is confounded, Merodach is broken in pieces. Her idols are confounded. Her images are broken in pieces. All right, this is what the Lord is going to do ultimately to America and its idols and its false gods. And that says in verse 3, For out of the north there shall come up a nation against her, which shall make her land desolate, and none shall dwell therein. They shall remove 
they shall depart both man and beast all right so this is talking about this third world war that's coming that that uh nation that's coming up out of the north right that's in reference to russia all right and uh russia is currently engaged in a uh battle if you will with ukraine really against nato but they're fighting in ukraine all right so there's a conflict at play right now between nato and russia russia is this nation from the north that's going to come up and make america desolate all right now i'm gonna jump down to uh Verse 9, this is Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 9. For lo, I will raise and cause to come up against Babylon an assembly of great nations from the north country, and they shall set themselves in array against her, right, in battle array. From thence she shall be taken, their arrows shall be as of a mighty expert man. None shall return in vain, and those arrows are the nuclear missiles, all right? Russia got subs off the coast of America. They've sunk battleships over here. All of them, I guarantee you, are fitted with nuclear missiles. Plus, you got the intercontinental ballistic missiles that Russia can fire from its homeland that'll be over here in around 30 minutes or less to, to decimate this place or to obliterate America. This is what's coming. It says, and all Chaldea shall be a spoil, and all that spoil her shall be satisfied, said the Lord. Right, because America has done so much wrong to so many people. Yeah, they're going to be satisfied to get, get their lick back on America. All right. It says, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of mine heritage, because ye are grown fat as the heifer at grass. And below as bulls, and bellow, and bellow as bulls, right? The most high heritage are us, his people, the children of Israel, the so called Negroes, Latinos, and Native Americans. That's why I said, because you were glad, because you rejoiced, O ye destroyers of my heritage, all right? Y'all have destroyed the children of Israel, and there's a price to pay for that, all right? So that's it on that. <coughs> uh, burden of the Babylon, uh, burden of Babylon. All right, Isaiah chapter thirteen. Let's start at the top. Verse 1, the burden of Babylon, which Isaiah the son of Amos did see. Lift ye up a banner upon the high mountain, exalt the voice unto them, shake the hand, that they may go into the gates of the noble. All right, we're lifting up the banner, the banner of the word of the Lord. The high mountain is America, Babylon. This is the high mountain. Mountains in reference to uh, nations. All right kingdoms it said i have commanded my sanctified ones i have called my mighty ones for mine anger even them that rejoice in my highness these are the the uh, angels of the most high all right the sanctified ones that's that's us all right those who have this truth and are committed to the teaching of the word of the lord we're being sanctified by his word all right it says in verse 4, the noise of a multitude in the mountains like as of a great people, a tumultuous noise of the kingdoms of nations gathered together. The Lord of hosts mustered the host of the battle. Uh -huh, the multitude of the mountains, all right? This is going to be all nations, all armies of the nations coming together. That's the noise of the multitudes in the mountains like as of a great people. All right, and uh, we're really in reference to these missiles. It 
it says in verse 5, they come from a far country from the end of heaven, even the Lord and the weapons of his indignation to destroy the whole land. All right. So this third woe that I read about is none other than this third world war that's coming. All right. And it says in verse 6, how ye for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the almighty. All right. Therefore, therefore shall all hands be faint and every man's heart shall melt. Right. It's great destruction, great misery. Great devastation coming, not only to America, but to the world. But America is going to receive the worst of, of the uh, punishment that the Lord is going to dole out. All right. By way of these thermonuclear missiles, America is going to become one big lake of fire. And uh, yeah, you got your, your commander in chief telling you that this is World War Three. When we sit in the tanks and the planes and the trains, make no mistakes about it. This is World War Three, and this is where we are right now. All right. The world is at war. And, and there's no stopping it. You know, you got a lot of people out there wishing and hoping for peace like Gerald Salente and others. But there shall be no peace. Until this third woe. And then, you know, the Lord will establish peace. All right. So. Uh, with that, I'm going to end it right there. I pray that you brothers were edified. And to the next one, Shalom.